Hello, everybody. Happy afternoon. It's early afternoon here in Chicago. I know you guys are all over the world, so it's different times everywhere. Um, but this is Tanya Lux, and I'm the product marketing manager for everything digital art here at Corel. And today we have a really exciting presentation. And I am also happy in, to announce that Issa Sousa is our brand new painter master. She I've been working with her for quite some time and she has definitely earned this title. And hopefully you all can see on my screen here because she has been hard at work behind the scenes creating all kinds of valuable learning content for you. And there's a couple different locations. It's free. You can access, it's a free Sergeant Brushes Master Course. It's seven different classes that she created. You can find this on IA Mag. And this is also a great resource. And if you're looking for other learning content, I would encourage you to visit this website. We have also posted the content in our own learning center. So you can find the entire course there as well. All these videos, they all lead to the same thing that's our YouTube channel. So wherever you choose to consume, these are it's an amazing course and you can spend your holidays painting away. We also have a sweepstakes going on and outside of being a painter master, she is also an ambassador for Intel and MSI. And we're running a sweepstakes that's probably going to go through mid-January where you have a chance to win an ultimate bundle that includes the MSI Prestige 14 Evo machine and also Corel Painter 2021 with an ultimate brush pack and Pinnacle Studio. It's free, guys. So if you want to go to the website, I'll post all these links into the webinar for you guys. And we'll also send them in the follow-up email. But all you have to do, it's just a sweep. So put your name and email in there and you're entered to win these amazing prizes. All right, so with that, now that I've talked about how many amazing things she's already done, she also has put together a wonderful webinar, very detailed. She's also gonna follow up with even more details after we kick the this hour long session up here. So. I can see your screen. It looks perfect. So I think yeah. we are ready to roll. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> All right. Hello, Tanya and everyone attending this webinar. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. And it's so very nice to be back. Um, I'm very nervous, <laughs> like I am usually am at the beginning of uh, presentations, but I think it will go away soon. <laughs> All right. So here is an overview of what we are going to see today. On block one, we will go through some quick theory on how to craft a great character. Um, block two covers from ideas to a finished illustration. So I'll first do a breakdown of the creative process for this autumn theme artwork and then a breakdown of the illustration or painting process. On block three, I will do a painting demo. Um, since this artwork is very complex to paint here on the webinar, I will show you some abstract demo of the tools I have used on its process and how I did key parts of this painting. And the final part of the webinar, we will do some Q&A session and I hope to be able to answer some of your questions. So take notes or write down your questions in the chat as we progress. And we take, um, I'll try to answer everything at the end of the presentation. Okay. <laughs> so, all right, sorry, um, wrong, <laughs> wrong slide. Just let me do something here. Um, I wonder why this image is looking a little bit dark, but it's okay. All right, so let's dive into some quick theory. And I want to express um, the word quick because um, these are complex ideas that would need full workshops to be explained. But um, I will work with some basics. And what makes a great um, character in general? 
It will answer that question looking at two main aspects. A is character essence and B character design. So we start with point A and that is character essence. And the answer is in a single most important question you can ever ask about your subject. Who is the character? Where does he or she lives or exists? How is the character's world? What is the character's reason for existing? What is his or hers function? How is the character's personality? What are his or hers attitude? So these are some of the many questions that you can answer to get to know your character. And one simple but very useful tool I have taught at character classes or workshops is that you ask these questions and you write down the answers on a paper or a document um, as one or two paragraphs. So this is a quick, effective way to create an idea for a character for purpose, purposes of developing an illustration or concept to your portfolio. And if you want to go a bit deeper, but still in that quick prompt spirit, other very important question to ask is, what are his or her traits? A character also needs to have character. So write down with some um, stick words, sticky words or short sentences what these core qualities are. Examples of core qualities. Defiant, good-hearted, a fighter, has a sense of justice but sometimes defies the law, etc. And one final note on a character's essence is to understand this principle. A character's essence or qualities go beyond era or time, beyond gender and race. This means that if you have crafted a good character, it can be a man or a woman, human or animal, living in any period in history or in the future, etc. Because no matter how you represent it, the essence of what makes it relatable and real to us will be there. So again, these are very compressed basic keys. I highly suggest you take um, classes on character concept and development and also very helpful in writing. When you take writing classes, you get some amazing tools to weave solid characters for projects such as films, games, animation, um, books, comic books and what not. So we go to point B and that's for character design. So we have a whole visual language, um, a composition, elements of storytelling that will be super successful when it is applied to answer the question of who is the character. So we see a lot of generic um, characters out there that cannot stand out, that we look at quickly, and we don't care about them because the design or the visuals, they are not answering um, this question. And one of the principles of design is form follows function. So only when you know who the character is, its purpose or function, you have a sustainable design. So the way to translate visually um, a great character design um, that you know is a product of the character essence is through composition. So I will just quickly pass you through some important compositional aspects applied to character. And they can be perceived coming from pose, anatomy, costume, props, and so on. So this, um, the first uh, set is lines. So vertical lines um, in a character design, um, they stand for grandeur, epic, majestic. Horizontal lines will bring about um, peace and harmony or stability. Z, L, S lines um, stand for dynamism. Dutch angle or diagonal lines, and they will uh, bring dynamism, action, intensity, drama, tension, line of beauty, and curvy lines in general, they will bring movement, activity, life, grace, 
harmony, pleasantness. And another um, key is basic or complex shapes. So shapes make the design more memorable and deliver subliminal messages, just as the lines. Round shapes, um, they are pleasant. They bring about friendliness, cuteness, um, softness, positivity. Notice how it's very common to have round shapes for characters who are cute and overall children's animation features. Squares and rectangles, they bring about strength and force and order and monuments, weight, stability, rigidity. And notice how even um, how most superhero types, for example, they will display um, a squarish or rectangular dominating shape or silhouette, even though balanced out with other types of shapes and lines. And triangles, for example, they are a great symbol of power. Inverted or negative triangles can have negative connotation and symbolize uh, tension. Very much used in that way, but it's not a rule. For example, angels are inverted triangles, and they are the most power powerful symbol of light and goodness. And they are the direct messengers of God. So, and they figure form an inverted triangle. And this inverted triangle in an angel's figure represents this um, incredible power. So positive triangles can have positive connotation as the basis um, is quite stable. So next we go to rhythm. I would say that shapes or lines that repeat in a rhythm have a more aesthetic connotation makes it simply more pleasant and interesting for the eyes in a process of association and discovery. Emotional weight. That can be brought about by facial expressions, um, color value, body language, and for example, lighting. So they can be depicted as light or heavy, make you feel happy, are heartbroken. Let me go to the next here. And we have framing. When you want to frame an important um, detail or part of the character, and you do that with the use of contrasts, props, hair, etc., like in the picture here. So we have color and value code. Color reinforces the message you want to convey. Colors adds, um, color adds interest and it's the second layer of mood. The first layer of mood is lighting. So the broad, broad rule is that villains and shady characters will most likely use dark, less saturated colors, um, blacks, grays, reds, purples, violets, and good characters, heroes, will most likely use bright, more saturated colors, white, warm colors, um, blue, pink tones, and so on. But you can uh, also go in more nuanced choices depending on the character or the project. So sometimes a great, effective character design can be one simple detail or wrapping it up in simplicity. In other words, it's not about adding thousand details or props or accessories to the character, but maybe adding one important um, item that will give a good clue of who the character is. An example of um, when less is more, the concept coined by master painter Leonardo da Vinci is this character illustration um, of mine from 2012. So her design centers on her body language, pale skin and shiny eyes. And that is all I need to convey who she is and what is happening to her. So there are many other principles of composition that um, you need to learn, but these will get you started. 
Also, it is possible to go much more in depth regarding what we just read here. And that's why I urge you to study composition because there is no base for design without these principles. And I am right here with you as a student trying to learn and improve on these things as well. All right, so I hope everyone is following. So, <laughs> Tanya, are you, are you there still? <laughs> I hope everyone is following. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. It took me a second uh, to mute. Everything, like, it, everything's good. Um, okay. So yeah, you can continue on. Looks good mm -hmm. and sounds good. Okay. So let's go um, to the second part of this webinar. So let's see some of the breakdown for the creative process of our theme illustration. And take note that. Um, the principles I will show you now, they can be applied whether you are creating a character from scratch, working further, or modifying an old one. I will show you from the perspective of developing further based on an old personal idea. So what was the initial idea? To paint or illustrate some female nature spirit connected to or representing the autumn season. And the starting point or inspiration was this autumn sketch I did in 2019. It's a bit um, rough and I did it for fun. And it's also actually a paint over of an even older idea I did some years back. So for this webinar, I wanted to create a similar character, keeping some of the same visuals, but who had her own twist as a separate entity. So I asked the question, who is the character? And I got this one paragraph. A spirit of the Norwegian autumn made up of natural mystery and visual warmth of the season, as well as natural elements that represent this period and region. Where I live, autumn um, is the beginning of the dark season as I live um, quite close to the North Pole. So normally marked by frost, gorgeous warm colors on the overall vegetation, varying from orange browns to vibrant yellows, reds, purples, and pinks. Also snow showers, strong winds. The landscape is shaped by mountains, small valleys, fjords, and lakes. Um, I have also observed raven during, uh, ravens during this time of the year and some of their interesting behavior. They will fly off mountain cliffs, making beautiful elaborated acrobatics, something that looks like a dance or a play. And I want to add some of these elements as well. So the character is a spirit who represents these elements combined. It's very philosophical, but there you go. So what are her traits or core qualities? I'd like her nature to be associated with some of the very natural aspects she represents, a degree of darkness and coldness like the season, hence her expressionless um, face and distant stern gaze, as if she is almost devoid of empathy and mysterious, see the orange red eyes, um, the makeup and the undead raven adorning her head. Um, free like the ravens, majestic and powerful as the weather. So the flying leaves magically emanating from her represent that freedom and the majesty, whereas her power is imposed by her body language. And also protector of the animals and the land. This means that she may harm humans sometimes. So the overall contrast of vibrant, welcoming colors with a dark twist of her visuals. So knowing who she is, I could give her proper design. So what was my objective from this point? Um, to finish developing her design as some sort of an illustration or cover art. A way to start is exploring simple iterations when you don't have a clear vision for your design yet. So playing with shapes in black and white thumbnails, for example. Um, in fact, one rule of design is to always try to solve the design in the simplest instance 
possible. And that's also what I use for clients' work. Here we have the starting point. And to make the derivative design to this new character, the first thing I want to do is to solve the character, um, to solve the head gear. On a base design, she looks as if she is in war mode, in helmet and war paint. For the new design, I want that gun. So what we are doing now is basically concept art. We are solving problem. We are finding solutions to functional design to this new character. So concept art is equal solving design questions. For this demo, I did three attempts of headgears for her. Um, the first one would be elegant, but it's a bit too obvious. The second one, it's a bit overused. I've seen that too many times. The third one is a bit mysterious and unique. Best fitting for the character's essence and core qualities, at least according to my perception. So whatever decisions you take along the creative process, it should always enhance the design to work for the character's essence and core qualities. And the next thing I wanted to solve is her hair color. I wanted the same hairstyle, long and voluminous, so I don't need to try different designs for this aspect. I try some possible hair colors. The first, um, vibrant yellow, is beautiful and eccentric, but it is um, too happy for the character. Brown to orange is a bit conservative. The third has some of the starting points, uh, pink and the leafy gradient that adds eccentricity. In some mythologies, the hair is a symbol of strength and power. So the vibrant colors can convey that idea, as well as represent the friendliness and protection she provides to the animals of the region. So this was my choice. And here I have added some makeup to complete her picture as well. I got a clear vision of what I wanted for her costume, um, at least for the given moment and given the short time I had to prepare um, this class. So I didn't do any costume design attempts, but you can go exploring in simple sketches and thumbnails of your own character costumes, weapons, or whatever you want to add to him or her. I did um, this um, color thumbnail and then a bit more polished sketch, first in um, black and white to focus on shape, and then a new one to um, help me with the colors and texturing. And I particularly never add color on black and white um, works. I start from scratch, and that is because I think the colors um, get quite flat if you just paint over something that's black and white. So, I'm sorry, <laughs> no, wrong slides. We continue on this one. So let me just quickly elaborate on this costume. So the dress has a medieval cut with the shoulders a bit more exposed. And that's a good indication that she um, feels no cold like a normal human. The brown represents the fields and the forests and the white represents the, the frost and the snow. These round adornments they are Viking inspired. They are carved from rocks, um, which represents most of the land and the soil here. The leaves stand for the autumn itself, and they come out of the stone adornments, which is literally how forests grow here, straight out of the bedrocks. And it's a fact that always amazes me. The pointy embroidery here, um, and her waist um, represents the pine trees and the evergreens abundant in a region. So last but not least, uh, the dead twigs, um, they stand for the death that the season brings. So the design in itself is very simple, but it carries um, symbology. But notice that not all character um, designs needs to have symbology, by the way. 
So the final thing I wanted to solve before initiating the illustration was how should I show this character? What should be a, a good pose and composition for her? And I did again some quick thumbnail sketches. The first one is my uh, favorite visually, but it's too much of a pin up here. And I may use the pose and composition to another character later on. The second works, um, works well too, but I could never see this character with her chin down and shoulders slightly closing in. And the third is can could end up a bit menacing. I like it, but it's not suitable for this particular time. So again, every decision that you do in a character design, it needs to be based on um, the character core qualities and to answer the question of who is the character. So not wanting to be stuck, I decided to go for something simple, a headshot. So I did some further research, took me one hour to find a suitable head tilt um, reference. And before I did the new composition, I came back one step and updated um, the costume design, which by the way, ended up different <laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right, so finally, had a starting point for the illustration. So these are guides, not rules, meaning I can improve during the process as this is a personal work. Client work may follow other rules. So here's a rough thumbnail for the composition. And here a super quick rudimentary thumbnail for the basic colors. I could have done a thumbnail for mood, but I wanted to let that open and see what would happen during the process. When I do client work, I always do some mood thumbnails as well as better color thumbnails. All right, so um, everybody's still with me. I'll go to a breakdown of the process. So when I do personal paintings, I have a very free process. I like to open to um, I like to be open to experimentation and improvisation at all times. So this means I may advance some steps and get back some, and sometimes try multiple approaches for parts of the painting. And I have recorded the full process for this artwork, um, explaining in in detail every pass. So stay tuned because it's coming to Painter's YouTube um, channel very soon. So for now, we can quickly go through um, the steps of how this painting came to life. And I started out by blocking a basic background, like these used for photography, as I had in mind this part should be quite abstract in the final work. So this unpainted gap is where the character will stand. And... Then I worked the flat shape of the character's body and costume, and this unpainted gap here will be later on covered by other elements. And add some basic shading. Her shoulders may look strange. This is because the shading for these um, elements, um, sorry, this is the shading for elements that will be added later on. So advanced more on her features after exploring different ones on a previous pass. And I changed her lips at least three times to find suitable lips for her. <laughs> um, added, so I kept working on her face and head. And then I added some makeup and started working on her eyes. So I finalized the work. Sorry, I finalized the work in her eyes and added the hair. Um, in the final image, you only see a few parts of the hair. So why did I texture and work so much on it? And that's because at that point, I didn't know how much of it I would like to show. As I said, I like to improvise and change things as I progress on personal work. 
but the design um, during the process, however I change it, it will always serve the character um, core characteristics. All right, so I added some jewelry, add more details to her costume. Notice for this particular piece, I have worked mostly with local colors of these elements. Adding the lighting and toning um, later on the process. So again, I have textured these elements because I didn't know at that pass how much of them I would show in a final work. Plus, I think it's fun sharpening my texturing skills. And if you wonder what is this ugly thing here, this ugly shape, well, that's a placeholder for the raven. And why did I add it here? I add it here because the raven will be um, the darkest point in a character's figure. So this is to help me fine tune the values at this point as a placeholder. And I added the first leaves here as well. So I decided to go a bit crazy on the leaves and make something very colorful, almost overkill. You see now I started applying lighting and mood to them as well as the overall image. And after some experimentation with the leaves, I decided for red purple leaves on her shoulders. So I added more leaves and glowing effects and particles as well as the raven. So the final step or the finish is just to add the last details and the mood. And at this point, I'm still very happy with the painting, so I celebrate. And as usual, the next day I'm already dissatisfied. I'm happy but dissatisfied nonetheless. And I see so many things I could have improved. I know many artists who go through the same process. So sometimes I improvise on fresh works the following days, but most times I just want to move on and see what I can do next, how I can improve upon the next artwork with the experience that I got from the previous one. And last note about the process is that I have painted everything you see here from memory, like texture, shapes, um, her facial features, the leaves, the mold, etc. except I looked at reference for the pose and the head tilt and how the lighting would work on the planes of her face. I also used the mirror um, now and then to help me with the perspective. So this is another simple resource you can use for your own work as well. A small mirror and your beautiful face. And furthermore, I recommend that if you have less experience, keep a reference for the pose separate references for facial features, textures, lighting, and any other elements you want to include in your work. I paint looking at reference when I do client work and when I study or sketch realism. Otherwise, I use personal works, stylized paintings like this, to unwire and sharpen my memory skills. All right, so we have come to the third part of the webinar and I hope um, everything has been smooth so far. Tanya, <laughs> what do you think? Is everything going smooth? <laughs> yes, yes, it looks and sounds good. Um, we have, mm -hmm. there are questions coming in, but I will yeah. hold them until Yeah, the great, awesome. Okay, so I'll continue. And so here we have the third part of the webinar and I show you the tools or brushes that I have used throughout the process. So we have an overview. So for thumbnail and annotations and quick sketching, I use the scratchboard tool. You find it in an artist's favorite. I can maybe um, just a second. I have so many, so many windows here. So the scratchbook tool is here. Sorry, scratchboard tool is here in artist's favorite right close to the sergeant brush which is also one of my favorites <laughs> okay and 
For the painting itself, um, I used digital airbrush 99.5% of the time, which in my opinion is the most versatile tool in Painter. <laughs> you can do so many things with an airbrush. And the remaining um, half percent of the time, I used a sprinkle airbrush. I'll do a demonstration soon, so you'll see about it. And the coarse blender and the smear blender. So the blenders, let me just move. I have so many um, windows here. So the blenders are here. So um, coarse smear, this is the one I used. And this smear blender for this particular piece. I normally avoid using blenders. I, I prefer not to, and um, for the simple reason that they consume time. So if I am working with other tools, um, different brushes, I normally work so in a way that I already avoid or don't need to use blenders. But sometimes if you make a cropping, for example, of an image, um, you can use the blender just to make a, a smooth transition from the pasted element until um, your underneath layers. All right, so now that you have seen the tools that I use, and as you can see, I am a type who prefer, um, prefers fewer tools or working with fewer brushes. So now let's do a painting demo. I have talked so much. <laughs> All right, so let me show you in abstract um, uh, demonstrations here, the key principles that I have used for this painting. Let me just um, resize my things here. Sorry, I'm showing this presentation from a very small laptop. <laughs> ah, sorry, just a moment. Let's see if we can reorganize these. Ah, diminish this a little bit. There, perhaps. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you on the first um, principle is hair or skin and hair. So please watch my painter webinar um, on painting skin and hair with focus on the airbrush because I basically use the same principles to paint the character in this um, outcome theme. So I'm not going to cover it here. You go there and watch it for your own benefit. You can find it on um, Painter's YouTube channel. The title is Fundamentals of Painting Hair and Skin. But if you just type Painter Skin and Hair Tutorial, this will appear as well. So this is the first principle. So the second principle is a vignetting um, effect. Let me show you. It's super easy to do. And you can use um, a big size digital airbrush. I'm zooming out, so it will be a little bit easier for me. Let me um, find, sorry, I have a window here that you cannot see is the window for the webinar. And it was a little bit in a way. Oh, sorry. Okay, airbrushes, me, sorry. It's the invisible window that you cannot see but it is here <laughs> okay digital airbrush yeah got it let me put this here so you make your digital airbrush in a very um, big size of course that will be according to your artwork and you put it in low opacity i had it in very very low opacity because i'm very light-handed so if you um you need to use the brush tracking see sorry um preferences brush tracking so you need to find out where you are uh, in the brush tracking whether you are soft-handed or heavy-handed and so on and then um, adjust accordingly so the point here is that you will use this big digital airbrush in low opacity and choose any color values in a color wheel, of course, according to your artwork, that can be darker, gradually darker than your lightest point. So if this is our lightest point, so um, go a bit more down in the value. It can be more saturated or desaturated um, according to your artwork. And very softly, you can 
like make a circle for example or you can just do um, a square gradient make the shape that you want this vignetting effect to take hold you can do one brush strokes continuous brush stroke or you can dab a little bit it's up to you however you feel more comfortable and softly you just feel the space around where it will be darker very softly all right so then you make a new layer and you choose a darker value it can be more saturated or desaturated is up to you and um, also accordingly to your artwork and you start doing the same process but not in the same um, radius so go a bit further as you can see here sorry it's not a perfect <laughs> yeah so and then you just go filling the spaces so one uh, right so and then you can repeat the process one more time or depending on um, the complexity of your gradient more times i don't know and the idea is every time you do a new layer you push the opening of your vignetting a bit further always gradually going down in the values like this so so this is the basic principle for creating this um, vignetting effect in the artwork and for the most i would recommend that you experiment um, with compositing modes such as hard light or overlay or luminosity for example um, so it can show more dimensional results over your artwork so that was the second principle let me increase this so let's see something else so what we do now sorry about this adjusting it. so this um the third principle i want to show you is the leaves motion blur and depth effect and this is technically very easy to do as well so all you need to do is um, have your airbrush in a low opacity um, in a small size take some small size and some colors um, some leaf colors for example and start painting some leaf shapes start small of course, I would also recommend that you do um, a composition for them so you know how they will flow, um, how um, they will be placed in your image. So that's uh, important. Right now it's just random. I don't have any, obviously, um, any composition, but it's just to, to show a point. All right. so. I'll be doing some leaves here a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they look a little bit strange, but there you go. <laughs> and remember to vary a little bit in size and shape so they look a little bit natural. Uh, look at references, for example. All right, so we have some leaves. Maybe a pink one, just for fun. Yeah. All right. So there. Um, so we want to increase that depth, right? Um, we want to give this idea of motion blur. So make a new layer, and you repeat the process. You increase the brush size a little bit more, and you can use um, again leaf um, different leaf colors sorry leaf colors <laughs> it's just to make them a little bit bigger and um yeah like as if they are flying around this looks a little bit like a feather <laughs> 
So let's do it. So one. Um, I'm a little bit out of ideas for leaf design because I guess I used most of them for the painting. So, <laughs> all right. So we have some some leaves here. I'll just add a couple more, and then we go to the next step. Yeah. So, okay. So then we have um, these leaves here. So we make a third layer, and then we make bigger leaves so let's see what happens now so as you notice the bigger the leaves the more diffuse they become and that is because of um airbrushes natural pro property that in big sizes the airbrush will look very soft and smooth and in small sizes it will look more defined so you don't need to apply any effect, um, any motion blur. It's just to really use um, the airbrush in um, this um, low opacity mode and bigger size, of course. Let me make a pink one. Then I'll show you some other cool stuff very soon. All right. so. All right, so the other thing I want to show you is that you can use the eraser, um, um, low opacity, a little bit soft eraser to fine tune the shapes of your leaves. Because right now I was just working on them like a little bit fast. I'm a slow painter, by the way. And if you want to just fine tune your leaves, just um, either you paint slow and make a nice shape in first place, or, sorry, or you just use um, the eraser to fine tune it for you and you can do it in all the layers all right so we have quite some nice colors here very colorful for my taste but it shows a point and the next thing i want to show you is the glow effect right so sorry move this here for the glow effect to show a little bit i will need um, a mid you need a medium to dark um values so artwork or background sorry this was on ah that's why my presentation was a little bit darker it's because i had this on all the time i'm so sorry for that you probably have seen colors a little bit darker than they should be it was this thing on all right <laughs> sorry about that so then we have um this uh, working from mid tones to dark tones and how do we apply the glow effect it's very simple very very simple um you choose um i would choose a value and a saturation in this area here but you need to tune a little bit differently um the idea is with, still with the soft airbrush a little bit big size for example if you have a red leaf apply um, a yellow color or a green color don't apply the same color because it won't show well, so you put it on hard light, put it on hard light, and it will show a little bit, um, create this idea of glow. If it's a yellow leaf, you can use the green effect or a pink, for example. Um, sorry <laughs> yeah so try to use um, for the glow a different color than the color that you have on a leaf if it's a green leaf um orange perhaps there you are so yeah and if you want to add an extra depth to this um, glow effect so just um go for example one extra layer and for example if your previous layer was a red glow then do um a yellow glow or orange glow so let's um, apply that i'm almost finishing here with the presentation as we are almost running out of time i'm almost done folks almost done so yeah so you can go applying these um 
glow effects like this. It looks quite dreamy. You can also make leaves that are um, in hard light mode. It will look very nice if you have some underlying artwork. It will create um, very cool effects. Sorry, I'm almost done here. Okay, so last effect I want to show, I'll try to go very fast so we have time for the Q&A, um, is you go on a sprinkle airbrush. Let me take this here. And you get a very big size, a big size according to your artwork. And the feature here, you take to between a 10 and 15. And what you do now, let me just do this here, you, in a value that's similar to what you did with the leaves, a um, little bit here or a little bit up here, you just go dabbing on the screen. Look how cool this is. I could <laughs> do this the whole day. <laughs> so, yeah. Looks like a small galaxy. So you can set this in um, hard light again, or overlay as you wish, and you set it to low opacity so we have some particles. So if you want to add some dimension to this effect, you just um, you diminish the brush size, for example, if you have an area of focus in your image, and you decrease also the feature. So decrease the brush size and feature, and again, just dab around your image like this. Yeah, very cool. All right. And then you can set it again to um, hard light or overlay or whatever mode you want and take it to um, lower opacity. You can fine tune this transition between um, the smaller particles and the bigger particles simply using um, an eraser in low opacity. So then you have an area of focus and this um, motion effect or this um, close-up effect. Wow, so basically these are the principles that I use for the painting. Sorry, I have been talking forever. <laughs> and yeah, that was it. I hope we have some time for the Q&A. <laughs> yeah, sure, we, we yeah. have time. Um, so let's see here. I didn't write down your name. I, I'm tracking the questions in a separate yeah. time. <laughs> um, so we're wondering, how did you create that? And this is a loaded question, but the pale mm -hmm. skin effect. Oh, okay. So the pale skin effect, um, I can't reproduce it now because it has been a lot of layers and a lot of process, but, um, there is a very um, easy principle, is just to work with light values. So, for example, um, don't use any shading that goes um, anywhere below a medium value. So the light, I can even use a color picker just to explain this. So this is the lighting, right? So I applied a little bit of a cold lighting about here, actually. And so for the shadows, you don't use anything that's beneath um, a mid tone. So if we color pick here, this is the max dark that we go to create this effect. And also use, for example, more saturated colors. So nothing below mid tone. And for example, a uh, little bit saturated colors will, will, will give this effect. And a soft shading, for example, just um, going a little bit. Um, in between the lightest tone and the mid tone. So yeah, and I prepared a video um, showing this process. So stay tuned because next week you can see this in more detail. Mm -hmm. I hope this helps. <laughs> okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, can you explain what the feature option does to the brush? Yes. I can, um, we can even do it here over in one layer. Okay. So I will try to explain, but ah. so the feature, right? So we have a big size for this brush. Let me put some uh, very uh, easy to see color. Maybe this, make it big. So now we are in low feature. So what do you see? You see the particles, they are very sparse, right? And small. So if I increase the feature, what will happen now? Look here. 
So the particles grow and they get um, closer together. So big picture will make the particles bigger and um, more um, centered, while a small feature is really just making um, the particles, you see, more um, apart from each other and smaller. So with bristles, does that translate into thicker bristles and thinner bristles? Ah, okay. So if, if we are talking about bristles, well, um, that I am not sure right now. I need to see it. Let me <laughs> let me just try to open up bristles um, on oil bristles here, for example, if I see if I find something, because um, I use so many brushes. But if you <laughs> ask me things like this, I don't remember. Blender Bristol, Bristol brush. Let's just try this Bristol brush and see if there is a a feature. Okay, so in this brush, for example, we don't have um, the feature. Um, right. option so it, it needs to be a little bit specific about what exactly bristol brush because there are many um in a painter settings there are so many brushes with bristles that it needs to be specific about where this brush i wonder is so if can... um, i should know this but i wonder if what try one of the ones with those little dabs like a real fan short or okay let me try this one yeah but, uh, okay, so this one has a feature uh, option, right? So right now we have the feature on three. So actually, uh, I think the feature just make them more apart in a case of this brush. So the bigger the feature you see here, more uh, we don't even see the bristles. So yeah, so with zero feature, we have this smooth very yeah, um, smooth brush and the feature if you increase it a little bit then we have the bristles right but it's um, the more we increase the the feature on this particular brush the less we will see all the bristles so the thing about feature is that it will work very differently from brush to brush mm. it will okay. be a different answer for each brush <laughs> um we had quite a few people ask um mm -hmm. What resolution is this image, and do you have a typical canvas size and resolution that you work at? Okay, when I'm doing a quick sketching, I work with um, like 500 pixels um, height or 700 pixels tops. If it's a sketching, if it's a fine painting like this, I will normally go um, 5,000 per 3,000 or maybe a little bit higher if it's something like this, a fine. Um, Final illustration like this. I I don't um, know where this file is right now, <laughs> but um, for this one, I think it was five thousand something for three thousand something. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what, what kind of drawing tablet do you use? Okay, um, I like to use this um, Intuos Pro. Um, I have been thinking about a Cintiq for a while, but I actually don't like the idea of drawing um, and painting over um, a screen directly. I always prefer to have the screen the screen as clean as possible so I can see um, how the brush is working. So I, I vacuum into Pro. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had a question early on if you might be willing to share your slides because they found them valuable. Oh my goodness, yes. So we can do something. If you'd like to have a copy of the slides, I can um, I can prepare them um, in the next hour or so, for example, and I can zip it and put it to um, on my website. I can create a link. Let me just um, think of a link here where you can download it later. So let me just write here the um, my website you know, is I can also, also yeah I can yeah. add that into the webinar follow up email as well yes. if you want Yes you want I can send it them. to you as well awesome Okay mm -hmm. why don't we so, do that Yeah so it can it, yeah so awesome so everybody's going to have an email a follow up email Um yes so okay. I, I, I'll put the, and people were asking, the session has mm. been recorded. So okay. it, it has to process, I'll pop it up on YouTube mm -hmm. later today. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. And tomorrow they'll get a follow-up email and we can put whatever awesome. information we would like in there. Awesome. So if you give me one hour, I can prepare the slides. I actually have, I was actually, I need to mention this. Um, I have other materials that I have given in other classes about characters that I can, um, I can, for example, put a, um, a PDF together with these slides that has a lot more uh, composition elements for characters, for example, so people can get along. I think, I think this would help. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So much more than I expected. Um, but yeah, I think that's the least. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of comments that mm -hmm. a lot of valuable information. So mm -hmm. if we could compile that and yes. send it along, <laughs> we could also potentially post it in our learning center. Um, I'm awesome. just going to do a quick scan here to make sure that mm. I addressed everything. Um, you know, there people are very interested to see the the mm -hmm. painting, uh, the recording that you did because they mm -hmm. love translucent skin. So I'll awesome. leave that. For them. <laughs> yeah, it's it's probably too much of a process to go into mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, so, yes, it it's very complex. <laughs> yeah, so we'll um, be sure to announce when we have the recording of the entire process for you all. Um, expect that email tomorrow. It'll have a link to the recording. If you don't see it up on YouTube tonight, you can also watch it on GoToWebinar. Um, they mm. upload it there as well. And yeah, um, uh, I forgot to mention early on that it is Black Friday season. <laughs> I yeah. call it season. Um, but for those of you, we didn't provide a special offer for Painter for the webinar because our pricing is going to be the best that you'll find throughout the year um, in from basically the upcoming week. So just to give you the heads up there, if you're looking, if you wanted to purchase Painter. Um, but with that, thank you so much for doing such an in-depth preparation for this and you know, your wonderful explanations. If you could see all the thank yous in the questions panel. Oh um, my goodness. Oh, you thank you everyone for coming and meeting us because making time for a webinar, one hour long webinar, it's a lot. So thank you so much for this positive energy. Yes, and I'm glad it was helpful. <laughs> yeah, thank it you was so great. Much. And we're thrilled to have you as a new painter master. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything that you have done. Awesome. All right. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and close this down. It'll, the recording will process, and I probably won't be able to get it on YouTube for a few hours, but yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. you can all look for that later. And I wish you all a wonderful day. Stay safe and healthy with the increasing corona going on right now i hope everybody is healthy so yeah and okay have a great bye day bye bye bye, bye. <laughs>